Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited today because I have a video that took months to make um, because I had to watch all of these episodes. Um, but I'm very excited because, uh, yeah, I watched the entire Star Wars franchise. Um, I have a little asterisk there. A little asterisk. All the entire Star Wars franchise in chronological order right um and i created what i will call kind of the ultimate viewing guide or essential episodes essential viewing um guide to the entire star wars franchise now i mean this is a pretty big <laughs> claim i'm not saying this is the best viewing order this is just the one that i view like watched all these episodes in um and i had seen the clone wars i hadn't seen all of star wars before this viewing but now i have seen at least most of it Actually, I have seen all of it, so I don't know why I said most of it. I've watched all of the things that there are to watch um, that is canon, at least. Um, so I feel pretty confident in um, giving you what I think are going to be the most essential kind of viewing order, I guess. Um, and I really, let me just say first, let me, let me talk about that asterisk right now, okay? The reason why I put the asterisk there is because this is not all of every single episode of the clone wars or all of every single episode of rebels okay i did kind of curate which episodes i think are the most essential most important um and i compiled them and i really cut out what i will consider a pretty big chunk of the clone wars and a pretty big chunk even of rebels um although um I still think that this is a good viewing for people who have never seen either of those. Um, so if you have seen the entire Star Wars franchise, but you haven't seen Clone Wars, or you haven't seen Rebels, I would recommend honestly watching this because it's really this is a good viewing order or just maybe just taking the, the episodes I'm recommending and viewing them on your own without watching all of it. Secondly, um, okay, so I, this just kind of goes up to Book of Boba Fett. It doesn't really include the sequel trilogy, although I have seen the sequel trilogy, obviously. Um, I just didn't, haven't watched it yet. I haven't actually finished it. I have watched The Force Awakens, but I haven't finished the, the sequel trilogy yet since recording this video. Um, since the Book of Boba Fett right now is actually airing, we're on episode two, so that's how, as far as I have on the Book of Boba Fett. Maybe there's something crazy, really important that happens in the Book of Boba Fett that I forget to include in this. Hopefully not. Hopefully I got everything. Um, either way, okay, uh, the sequels, I feel like there is more to be told. We don't really have all of the information yet, and certainly there's going to be new projects for the rest of you know, but it seems like the Clone Wars is a pretty complete saga. You can kind of supplement it, add to it. But right now, we're pretty much, we know kind of the sequence of events that happens, the most important things that are happening during the prequel era. And really, kind of, honestly, during the original trilogy, also up to the Book of Boba Fett, at least. Um, all right. So, without further ado, I'm going to break down every single episode, every single uh, movie, plus the Clone Wars, plus Rebels, plus the Mandalorian, plus Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> the other thing I want to include before getting into it is I don't know if this is the best viewing order if you've never seen Star Wars ever. I think if you've never seen it or if you have very little familiarity with it, I would recommend going to the original trilogy first or watching The Mandalorian. That's kind of what I started with. I didn't start with The Phantom Menace. Um, but if this is a second viewing or you know, if you're really brave. <laughs> All right. Um, the first episode, obviously, is episode one, The Phantom Menace. Now, The Phantom Menace is chronologically the first thing that we've ever seen from Star Wars in terms of the films. Uh, there's a lot of kind of supplementary material like comic books and uh, video games where they have explored earlier periods of the, you know, timeline. But as far as we know, with the films and until Star Wars The Acolyte comes out, The Phantom Menace is the first place that we start. It starts 32 BBY. If you don't know what BBY means, it means before the Battle of Yavin. The Battle of Yavin is the battle that takes place in uh, episode four, A New Hope. So basically, it's the year of 32 before, <laughs> 32 years before A New Hope, okay? That's where The Phantom Menace happens. I think this is pretty much an essential episode. You have to watch it. Um, people really don't like... I think out of all of the prequels, this is probably the, the, most, the worst one. Um, but yeah, 
this is the this is the first episode. Uh, it sets up Obi Wan. It sets up Qui Gon Jinn. Anakin Skywalker. We we learn the origins of the Skywalkers. We learn the origin of the Jedi. Right. It's basically the most important part of the prequels in a way because it sets up everything that is to come for the rest of the entire series. So. It is an important episode. You kind of watch it. I know a lot of people just tell you to skip this one. I think that that's, I don't know. I guess you could just watch Attack of the Clones, but I would recommend watching The Phantom Menace. Then after The Phantom Menace comes, obviously, episode two, Attack of the Clones. Um, again, this is another essential one. This sets up the entire Clone Wars. You can't really get around this one. <laughs> I don't know, it'd be hard to. Attack of the Clones, obviously, we get to see Anakin as an adult. This is the first performance by Hayden Christensen. Uh, you know, we get to see the beginnings of the Clone Wars. Kind of, we get na huge name drops like sifo -Dyas. We get to see Jango Fett and Boba Fett. We get to see the clones. Okay, so this obviously pretty important episode. Um, especially now, in hindsight, with Book of Boba Fett airing, right? And if you don't know, Attack of the Clones happens about 10 years after The Phantom Menace. Happens in 22 BBY, around about... Okay, the, so third, third in the viewing order is kind of where things start to get... Um, I don't know, a little dicey. I hasten to include, you could watch Star Wars The Clone Wars animated 2D series from 2003, which was the original Clone Wars series that led up right to um, the, the uh, Revenge of the Sith. It actually came out before Revenge of the Sith, so it led up right, right to it. Um, the reason why I say I hasten to add and really this is a completely optional this is not this would not be considered essential i guess but i want to include it because it's such a good series um it really doesn't add up with the timeline that now we have established with the animated clone wars from 2008 so it really doesn't you know you really can't watch it and consider it to, like the timeline that happens without having to i don't know work it around in your mind i guess um because we're going to get into the review, my review of all of these um, later, but uh, I guess let me just say the ending of it leads right into Revenge of the Sith in a way that doesn't work with the rest of the Clone Wars. Um, however, like pretty much everything up to that, you could kind of watch and satisfy yourself and just kind of maybe leave off the third three episodes and then which is kind of sucked kind of shitty because the first the last three episodes are like the best ones but um you kind of have to leave off those episodes because it it contradicts basic i mean it contradicts so much with what we know is established in the clone wars animated 3d show from 2008 so this one is more of an optional one uh, but the true number three would have to be the Clone Wars film, 2008. Uh, this is different from the series that comes after this, but this one is is canon. This is the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. This is where we get to see Rhoda the Hutt, um, Jabba's son. <laughs> so pretty fun. Uh, this is an essential episode. Uh, you know, an essential viewing. Basically, this is how we see Ahsoka. If you're gonna watch anything about Ahsoka, I think this one's probably a very important one. You get to see how she interacts with Anakin. Um, you know, kind of how she became his Padawan. So yeah, I'm going to have to say very important episode. Um, although it is not, it's not a good representation for the rest of what comes in the Clone Wars. I'll say like, I think the rest of the Clone Wars is a lot better than, the, than just this movie. So if you're, if you're looking at this movie and you really cringe, you really don't like it. Just know that the rest of the Clone Wars also has some of that, but I mostly cut it out, and it's a lot of the good parts of the Clone Wars from, from here on out. So the, the 2008 Clone Wars film takes place around 22 BBY, like kind of directly after Attack of the Clones. And then you go straight into the number four spot, which would be Star Wars, The Clone Wars, the 2008 series. Now this, <laughs> I'm going to go over every episode that you're going to watch. You're not going to watch them all. You can't even really watch them all in like, you can't just watch like episode one through episode, you know, season seven, episode 12. Like you can't do that. You have to watch um, sort of out of order. It's really called like you basically need a, a, an episode guide. I mean, I guess you could just watch them in chronological order, like 
in terms of how they were released. But this is an anthology series, which means that every episode is a different storyline. They're not they're not congruent, really. I mean, there is some congruency, but they're not directly related. It's It sort of just gives you little segments into the Clone Wars each episode. And some of the episodes are really, really bad. Some of them are awful. Some of them are way worse than the movie. <laughs> like, way worse, which is really saying something, because the movie's not, not great. Um, I'll review them in a... In a <laughs> at a later ep a later date okay but the for right now okay the clone wars i did curate it i created the best kind of viewing order now this is in chronological order and this takes place over a three-year span of time basically the three years between uh attack of the clones and revenge of the sith all of the clone wars basically takes place it during the clone wars animated series so you can kind of just imagine it taking place between those three years and i think it pretty much adds up to um just don't think too hard about it <laughs> okay happens between 22 bby and 19 bby so the first episode you're gonna watch is uh season three episode one which is clone cadets so already you're gonna start with the first episode of the third season rather than the first episode of the first season and then you're gonna jump back to the first season and watch season one episode five which is entitled rookies this is directly after the events that happen in season three episode one after this you're going to go to season two episode five and watch landing at point rain now this is a um kind of a multiple episode arc you're gonna watch season two episode five season two episode six season two episode seven and season two episode eight now after the brain invaders which is season two episode eight you're gonna watch season two episode 10 the deserter this is a standalone episode. After this one, you're going to watch Season 2, Episode 12, The Mandalore Plot. This is, again, a, a multiple episode arc. So you're going to watch Season 2, Episode 12, Season 2, Episode 13, Season 2, Episode 14. After this, you're going to watch Season 2, Episode 20, which is Death Trap. Uh, season 2, Episode 21, R2 Come Home. Season 2, Episode 22, Lethal Trackdown. Next, you're going to jump to Season 3 and watch Season 3, Episode 5, Corruption. Season 3, Episode 6, The Academy. Next is Season 3, Episode 2, which is Arc Troopers. This is a standalone episode. After this episode, you watch Season 3, Episode 12, Night Sisters. Season 3, Episode 13, Monster. Season 3, Episode 14, Witches of the Mist. After this is Season 3, Episode 15, Overlords. Th season 3, Episode 16, Altar of Mortis. And Season 3, episode 17 ghost of mortis next is season 3 episode 18 the citadel season 3 episode 19 counterattack season 3 episode 20 citadel rescue after this you're going to be watching season 4 episode 14 deception season 4 episode 16 friends and enemies season 4 episode 17 the box season 4 episode 18 the crisis on naboo after this you'll be watching season 4 episode 19 massacre season 4 episode 20 bounty season 4 episode 21 brothers and season 4 episode 22 revenge after this you'll be watching season 5 episode 3 front runners season 5 episode 4 the soft war season 5 episode 5 tipping points after this is season 5 episode 1 revival and then you're going to go to Season 5, Episode 14, Eminence. Season 5, Episode 15, Shades of Reason. Season 5, Episode 16, The Lawless. After this is Season 5, Episode 17, Sabotage. Season 5, Episode 18, The Jedi Who Knew Too Much. Season 5, Episode 19, To Catch a Jedi. And Season 5, Episode 20, The Wrong Jedi. Next, you'll go to Season 6, Episode 1, The Unknown. Season 6, Episode 2, Conspiracy. Season 6, Episode 3, Fugitive. Season 6, Episode 4, Orders. Then you go to Season 6, Episode 10, The Lost Ones. Season 6, Episode 11, Voices. Season 6, Episode 12, Destiny. And Season 6, Episode 13, Sacrifice. For Season 7, you will be watching all of the episodes, but you'll be starting with Season 7, Episode 5, Gone with a Trace. Season 7, Season 7, Episode 6, Deal No Deal. Se season 7, Episode 7, Dangerous Debt. And Season 7, Episode 8, Together Again. After this, you'll be going to Season 7, Episode 1, The Bad Batch. Season 7, Episode 2, A Distant Echo. Season 7, Episode 3, On the Wings of Kiradax. And Season 7, Episode 4, Unfinished Business. Now this, after all of these episodes, this is kind of the end of the Clone Wars animated show. Um, you will be watching the finale, which is uh, Season 7, Episode 9 through... 
12, but you'll be watching those episodes congruently as you watch Revenge of the Sith. Now, this is something that I actually did, and I've watched Revenge of the Sith now like three or four times because I I've been trying to get this ordering right to make sure that things kind of happen congru like in a in the right chronological order. Um, and what I kind of feel like is the most makes the most sense in terms of what when things happen and what order things happen. You will be jumping through different programs on Disney Plus if you're using Disney Plus. You'll be watching the seventh season of The Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith and also the first episode of The Bad Batch, all in kind of one sitting or maybe over multiple maybe over multiple hours. I don't know. So yeah, this this is kind of you know the mashup. You're going to be watching four episodes, plus the first part of one episode, plus an entire movie. But I promise you, I watched this, I did it, I've seen it multiple times, and I actually think it's totally worth it because it adds a lot of context to Revenge of the Sith. It answers a lot of questions about, like, why, where the fuck even is Ahsoka the entire time? Um, I think that it makes a lot of sense, and it also is very emotional, to be honest. So I would totally do this. I mean, if you haven't done this... This is like, this will blow your mind, to be honest. Okay, so to watch this, you have to begin with The Clone Wars Season 7, Episode 9. And you're going to start from the very beginning, and you're going to go all the way to uh, to this 1625. Once you get to that point, you're going to stop watching The Clone Wars, and you're going to start watching Revenge of the Sith from the beginning of Revenge of the Sith to 23 minutes and 38 seconds. After watching Revenge of the Sith to 23 minutes and 38 seconds, you'll go to The Clone Wars Season 7, Episode 9, and you'll finish what you just started, which was which would be minute 16, uh, second 26 to the end. After that, you go straight into Season 7, Episode 10. You're going to start with the beginning of that episode and then go to minute 2, uh, second 59. Then you're going to jump right back to Revenge of the Sith, Continue where you left off at 2339, and you're going to go to 5018. Then you're going to go back to The Clone Wars Season 7, Episode 10, and you're going to watch from Minute 3 to the end of the episode. Then you're going to go back to Revenge of the Sith, watch to 5919 where you left, then make it to 1 hour, 1 minute, and 54 seconds. Then you go back to The Clone Wars Season 7, Episode 11, you'll watch from the start of that episode to 4 minutes and 47 seconds. And then go back to Revenge of the Sith, where you left off at 1 hour, 1 minute, and 55 seconds, and you're going to watch until 1 hour, 25 minutes, and 14 seconds. Then at this point, you're going to go to The Bad Batch Season 1, Episode 1, and you're going to watch the start of that episode to 13 minutes and 20 22 seconds. Once you finish The Bad Batch, you'll go to The Clone Wars Season 7 Episode 11, and you're going to go to where you left off, which was 4 minutes and 48 seconds to the end of the episode. After that, you'll go right into The Clone Wars Season 7 Episode 12. You're going to start the episode and go all the way to 17 minutes and 8 seconds. You'll go back to Revenge of the Sith, where you left off 1 hour, 25 minutes, and 15 seconds, and you'll watch until 2 hours, 8 minutes, and 55 seconds. Next, you'll go back to The Clone Wars, where you left off on Season 7, Episode 12, at 17 minutes and, and 9 seconds, and then you'll watch that to the very end. You'll go back to The Revenge of the Sith one last time. You'll watch at 2 hours, 8 minutes, and 56 seconds till the very end of the movie. Now, this... It sounds like a lot of jumping around, and admittedly it is, but I promise you th this is the actual chronological order of the events that happen. I guess you could kind of shift around maybe if you watch something first or, or second because they kind of happen congruently, um, and it is a little confusing because of how things like you're... It's like multiple days pass by in Revenge of the Sith, and then... I don't know, the same amount of time is supposed to pass in the Clone Wars, and it, I don't know if it feels like it does. Maybe it's because of the different times of day on different planets. That's maybe a way to, to view it. Um, but overall, this is a pretty good, clean way to, to watch all of this. Um, it might take kind of a, a little bit, but I promise you it's worth it, especially adding the Bad Batch in there. And I'm really excited for multiple... For, I'm really excited for new things to kind of be included in the future because I think that there's even more that you could add on to this scene, especially with Order 66 that happens. Um, you can definitely add into that. After watching the extended cut of Revenge of the Sith, you'll go right back to the Bad Batch where you left off. Now, you're going to watch pretty much every single episode. Um, it's honestly worth watching all of the episodes. I have a feeling that there's going to be stuff in here that it becomes relevant later on. 
so I think it's probably just worth watching. And it's a, and unlike the Clone Wars, it is a much more um, linear storyline. So uh, you'll just watch from episode one to episode sixteen. Okay, once you finish the Bad Batch, this is where Solo, a Star Wars story, happens. Now I will tentatively say that to you do not have to watch this if you really don't want to watch it if you've seen it already and you are like i'm good i don't need to watch this um then you don't have to i had not seen this movie before this viewing so for me it was worth watching and i'm kind of glad i watched it in this way because i think it makes it make maybe a little more sense than if i had just watched it kind of right after i don't know rogue one or whenever it came out so solo a star wars story ha happens about six years after the bad batch the bad batch happening like basically right after revenge of the sith so the movie takes place between 13 bby and 10 bby there's sort of a three-year time skip that happens during that movie right now it doesn't really contradict with any existing tv shows or anything but it might in the future because there it seems like there's going to be a lot of upcoming series or movies that happen during this time frame so we'll see after finishing solo a star wars story this is where you're going to slot in star wars rebels now i know you just finished the clone wars but this is the next kind of thing in the timeline it does take place in a uh between five bby and one bby right so that's about five years after solo a star wars story or around like 14 to 20 years um from revenge of the sith so just like the clone wars i do have like an essential episodes guide you're not going to watch every single episode but uh you are going to be watching the majority of them um, Star Wars Rebels, again, it's much more linear, so there's less things that you can kind of cut out. So for Season 1, you're going to watch Season 1, Episode 1, Spark of Rebellion, Part 1. Season 1, Episode 2, Spark of Rebellion, Part 2. Season 1, Episode 3, Droids in Distress. Season 1, Episode 5, Rise of the Old Masters. Season... Season 1, Episode 6, Breaking Ranks. Season 1, Episode 10, Path to the Jedi. Season 1, Episode 11, Idiot's Array. Season 1, Episode 12, Vision of Hope. Season 1, Episode 13, Call to Action. Season 1, Episode 14, Rebel Resolve. And Season 1, Episode 15, Fire Across the Galaxy. Season 2, Episode 1, The Siege of Lothal, Part 1. Season 2, Episode 2, The Siege of, the Siege of Lothal, Part 2. Season 2, Episode 3, The... The Lost Commanders, Season 2, Episode 4, Relics of the Old Republic, Season 2, Episode 5, Always Two There Are, Season 2, Episode 6, Brother of the Broken Horn, Season 2, Episode 7, Wing of the Master, Season 2, Episode 6, Stealth Strike, Season 2, Episode 11, Legacy, Season 2, Episode 12, Princess on Lothal, Season 2, Episode 14, Legend of Lassat, Season 2, Episode 15, The Call, Season 2, Episode 17, The Honorable Ones, Season 2, Episode 20, The Mystery of Chopper Base, Season 2, Episode 21, The, the Twilight of the Apprentice, Part 1, Season 2, Episode 22, Twilight of, the Twilight of the Apprentice, Part 2. After this is Season 3, Episode 1, Step into the Shadows, Part 1, Season 2, Episode... Season 3, Episode 2, Step Into the Shadows, Part 2. Season 3, Episode 3, Holocrons of Fate. Season 3, Episode 5, Hera's Heroes. Season 3, Episode 6, The Last Battle. Season 3, Episode 7, Imperial Super Commandos. Season 3, Episode 10, An Inside Man. Season 3, Episode 11, Visions, Visions and Voices. Season 3, Episode 12, Ghost of Geonosis Part 1, Season 3, Episode 13, Ghost of Geonosis Part 2, Season 3, Episode 15, Trial of the Lightsaber, Season 3, Episode 16, The Legacy of Mandalore, Season 3, Episode 18, Secret Cargo, Season 3, Episode 20, Twin Sons, Season 3, Episode 21, Zero Hour Part 1, and Season 3, Episode 22, Zero Hour Part 2. Now, for Season 4, you're just going to watch every single episode. They're pretty much all essential. You can't just skip one. But I will add at the very end of season four, episode 15, around 42 minutes and two seconds, um, you can just decide to like cut that part off and watch it, save it to the very, very end of Return of the Jedi, um, because that is kind of an epilogue and, you know, you could just watch it or you could kind of save it because it because chronologically it happens at the end of Return of the Jedi. Now all of the events of Rebels takes place between 5 BBY and 1 BBY. So it pretty much happens right up to Rogue One. So after you watch Rebels season 4, you're going to be watching Rogue One. Rogue One is basically the story that happens in the scrawl text um, of A New Hope. So it pretty much leads right into Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, which takes place in 0 BBY. After this, obviously, we'll be watching Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, which takes place around 3 ABY, which is 3 after the Battle of Yavin. Then you'll be going to Star Wars Episode 6, The Return of the Jedi.
and that takes place around 5 ABY. Then after Return of the Jedi, you can watch that little <laughs> end epilogue of Star Wars Rebels. Now that takes place around 5 ABY to 9 ABY. It's not really clear exactly when all of those events happen, but it basically just goes over a long period of time. After finishing Return of the Jedi, this is where you're going to go into The Mandalorian. Now, this is pretty much catching us up to where we are right now. The Mandalorian takes place in 9 ABY, and as far as we're aware, all of the events that happen in Season 1 and Season 2 happen in the same year. After the events of Season 2, you're going to be watching The Book of Boba Fett, which we... <laughs> Which, as of the time of recording, there's only two episodes out, so I can't really tell you exactly where the timeline happens, but I think it pretty much makes sense to watch it right after the, the Mandalorian Season 2. Although, I guess if you really wanted to, you, you could probably cut up some of the episode and watch it right after Return of the Jedi if you really, really were inclined. But we know the events of the Book of Boba Fett happened during 9 ABY, immediately after the uh, end credit sequence in The Mandalorian. And after the Book of Boba Fett, the next canon material we have is star wars resistance um i haven't watched star wars resistance and i'm gonna say i'm gonna go ahead and save that after watching the mandalorian season two i feel like that's a pretty good ending point for <laughs> this watch uh watch through for me um but i guess after watching resistance you can watch episode seven the force awakens episode eight the last jedi and episode nine the rise of skywalker to me, those feel kind of incomplete right now, so I wouldn't, I would maybe hold off. Um, I mean, we're going to see a lot of new content, which is kind of why I thought I'll just, I'm not going to watch every single episode of The Clone Wars. Maybe I'll save that for when there's actually a lot more content out, like when, once we have the new Obi-Wan, once we have Ahsoka, once we have season three of The Mandalorian, like maybe then it'll make more sense to watch every single episode of um, The Clone Wars and Rebels. If you're wondering, this entire watch through, takes about three days and six hours um so it's quite a lot of time however it's not like the most amount of time um to give you some context the entire animated clone wars series if you were going to watch every single episode would take about two days and 18 hours and all of the episodes that i compiled takes around 21 hours so i cut out nearly 60 percent of all of the clone wars episodes and there's a similar kind of thing happening with Rebels. So the entire Rebel series would take about 37 hours. I got it down to 21 hours. So I cut around 40% of the total runtime of Star Wars Rebels. So this watch order basically cuts around half of the entire Star Wars watch time. And the majority of that is uh, from the animated series Um Rebels and the Clone Wars. So now I kind of want to go into the more spoilery um, talking about everything like how I felt after watching this whole experience, you know, just some of my thoughts, maybe I'll tell you, like watching the end of the Mandalorian was really an emotional experience. I feel like for me, even more so now, because seeing Luke Skywalker really is kind of like that, that culmination moment of everything that happens before, um, you know, especially because Yoda at this point died. Yoda is like one of the most important characters. The very first time we ever see another species of yoda was in the phantom menace which is actually the first time in this viewing order so it really is kind of like a a perfect like story from um the point of the phantom menace to the second season of the mandalorian um it feels like you know you start with yaddle and yoda taking on anakin who is like the apprentice to the jedi right and then you end with Luke Skywalker, who's Anakin's son, taking on baby Yoda, Grogu, who is Yoda and Yaddle's son. No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, I don't know. But maybe. And that, and I think that that's really cool. Like, I don't know. If you do it like that and, and nothing can change it <laughs> and nothing is going to debunk it. No, I don't know. Um, you know, but uh, and if you're wondering, I do. I did kind of include the upcoming things also. Um so if you really wanted to so if you're watching this in the future and you have all the access to all these things that i want to watch right now but i can't um then you know you'll basically start with the acolyte and then go into phantom menace and then you'll slip in the obi-wan series it'll probably take place right after solo if i had to guess um during that time period um and then after obi-wan we'll probably have 
that'll probably be the event of the Andor series, which we don't really know much about. Um, but it's likely that it's going to be happening kind of right before Rebels or five years before the events of Rogue One. Um, that's some of what I've heard. And then you'll likely be watching Ahsoka right after the Book of Boba Fett, which probably is going to come after... I don't know, either The Mandalorian Season 3. I don't know. I don't know exactly what, what the order is going to be on that. But if I had to guess, it would probably be Mandalorian Season 2, Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, Mandalorian Season 3. That's That seems maybe like the, the order we're going to see. I don't know. But the rest of the material, we don't really know what, when it's going to take place. The Rogue Squadron movie, which I don't even know if it's even going to happen. Um, we don't really know when that's going to take place. Um, I'm pretty sure... The Rangers of the New Republic, is that what it's called? I'm pretty sure that's going to get canceled, so... I think some of, and then some of the other stuff, we don't even know the titles or anything about it, so there's no point in, in speculating. As for my review of this kind of watch-along, and I guess kind of the entire franchise of Star Wars, <laughs> no pressure, um, I, you know what, I really, 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 really liked doing this, and I'm probably going to do it again in the near future. Maybe once Obi-Wan comes out this, this spring, um... But this was really like a fun, a fun watch along, to be honest. Um, I mean, I already I kind of have my qualms with the prequel trilogies. Like, I don't think that they're amazing movies, really. But this definitely gave me a new appreciation for them, especially Revenge of the Sith. This is like the coolest way to watch Revenge of the Sith. This definitely makes Revenge of the Sith like such a co better movie. I will say it is a little jarring going from Clone Wars to Revenge of the Sith because the Clone Wars Anakin has su such a different presence to him. He feels much more loyal to the, the Jedi Order than the movie version of Anakin, who feels much more like i don't know more selfish i guess in a lot of ways um but i still really really like this year this whole the whole watch through i really think that watching the clone wars and then watching revenge of the sith is is really cool you totally get the the feel that that everything kind of culminates to this one point in, in time where anakin decides to betray the jedi um and it does, I will say it does track, like it does make sense that Anakin in that moment would decide to save Padme. I mean, that's essentially what he's deciding. He's deciding to save uh, Palpatine and, and betray the Jedi, betray Mace Windu, not really be not really because he cares about the dark side of the force but it's more because he wants to save padme and so i i think that that makes sense for his character up up until that point and it also makes sense going forward with darth vader and knowing how what happens in his you know the eventual fate to darth vader which is again is like super amazing like this makes the original trilogy so much more like so much better honestly like watching the watching all this watching rebels and then watching the original trilogy watching all of it is just amazing and and i will also say that ahsoka really starts to feel like kind of the main character of this entire watch through even though it really is about anakin skywalker um and maybe like yoda and obviously luke skywalker and obi-wan um ahsoka feels like she's just as important of a, of a character especially because she's there alongside anakin up until the revenge of the sith right um and then she becomes a really important part to rebels and um you know kind of creating the rebellion that eventually is what helps take you know down the entire empire so you know and she's obviously going to be a pretty significant um part of the star wars lore going in you know into the future since you know they actually made her a, a live action character with a pretty popular actress i feel like they're trying to solidify her as one of the most important Jedi that they have available to them, which is, I mean, really, what other Jedi are even around during the events after Return of the Jedi? Because, I mean, yes, there's Luke Skywalker and Grogu now, um, but really, it's just like Ahsoka. Like, is there really, I can't really think of anyone else that, I guess there's people who think that Maze Windu is going to show up in Book of Boba Fett. We'll see. I don't know. I think that, it seems unlikely, but it, I, weirder, crazier things have happened. Like, you know, Maul surviving, so... <laughs> If they can pull that off, I guess they can pull off Mace Windu. But really, who else? What other Jedi really are there? Um, Ezra is somewhere, right? They're going to find Ezra eventually. I guess, like, they have uh, the redhead. What's his name from <laughs> Fallen Order? I can't remember. I haven't played, I haven't played those games um, yet. But I guess I will be kind of doing a part two of this video where I do go into the sequel trilogy. Um, I'm going to 
kind of what I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch them all. I'm gonna review them all. I've already watched the first The Force Awakens, and I've already kind of given all my notes about that movie. So I, I want to do more of like a breakdown on those, and maybe look at some of the the good qualities and some of the bad qualities to those movies um and maybe some of the things that they could have done differently comparing you know stuff that's in legends and stuff like that so i would like to make a video like that tell me if you guys think that that's interesting in any way um other than that i think we're we're good to go on the entire star wars saga <laughs> I think I figured it out. I cracked the code. Um, tell me, tell me if there's any episodes that you think I missed. I I already know. I already know. I probably should have put this disclaimer at the very front. I already know that there's a bunch of episodes that are iconic that people are going to be mad that I didn't include. Like I think of the darkness on Umbara kind of arc that I didn't include that. Or the Jedi, the gathering where um, Ahsoka... <laughs> And uh, all of the, the little younglings get new lightsabers. That's a cute episode and all. I was trying to keep it relevant. I was trying to cut it, cut, cut, you know, up until it's entirely relevant to the most relevant parts of this that you're going to get the most bang for your buck out of, I guess. Um, so I really just tried to keep it to characters getting introduced, kind of plot lines, you know, being uh followed through kind of things that you have to understand you have to know what goes on um to understand what goes on later that's kind of what i kept it mostly so to me i'm sorry the little youngling jedi <laughs> just do not really i think they all just died i'm just i i mean i hate to say it i think anakin sliced them all up and you know <laughs> And Revenge of the Sith. I think that's what happened. They gotta save one. If they had to save one youngling, they were gonna save Grogu. I'm sorry, other younglings. You guys are gonna get sliced and diced. Anyway, um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave a like. Leave a, leave a subscription. I probably will do... A remake this eventually in the future once all of the new content is all out. Um... You know, I'll probably do it where I watch every single episode of every single of Clone Wars. That'll be crazy, but that is to come, okay? For right now, I'm pretty satisfied with this list I made. Um, and I hope that some of you guys can get some use out of it.